if you don't have a rip you can actually convert Photoshop files to halftone dots and it'll be really the same as having a rip other than the uh, the ink deposit control now the Epson 1430 artisan lays a lot of ink down if you print in the highest photo quality setting so if you're gonna print without a rip and a rip does speed the printing process up whereas if you print as you probably know from printing uh, high quality photographs to your inkjet printer it's like watch, watching water boil it takes forever it could take four or five minutes to print out a full-size film or more at the highest photo setting but the highest photo setting lays down more ink. When you print to an inkjet printer, the higher the resolution you print at, the more ink you lay down. And you want enough ink laid down on, of course, on the film to make a nice dense area to burn a good screen. So RIP's functions also are to lay a lot of ink down and do it faster. But without a RIP, you can actually convert the file to halftone dots right in Photoshop. I took and just separated this one of the channels again from previous example from this job. So this is not a separation. This was this is just the underbase. Single file, grayscale file all by itself. If I go to the image pull down menu and go down to mode, one of the options is bitmap. I click on that and I want to make sure it's set for halftone screen, but the key to this is the output. If you leave this at 300 dpi for the output, then the rip, uh, then Photoshop is saying, okay, I'm going to make a little tiny halftone dot, but it's already a little, it's going to be a little jagged because the resolution is 300 dpi. You want to emulate the resolution of your inkjet printer. That's what a rip does. A rip makes that image at the resolution of your printer. Now, most inkjet printers are 1440 dpi, some are 2880, and you want to emulate that resolution, and that way you're going to have a nice clean halftone dot. I'm going to change this to 1440. That, that was uh, what I did last time, uh, so that's going to be my default now. We'll leave it set for halftone screen. We're going to say OK, and it brings up this window, and it wants to know the frequency, lines per inch, the angle, and the dot shape. And these are the things I've already told you, and we're going to say OK, and it's going to think about it. And again, there we have the file converted to halftone dots. So, the problem is close this file out. Here's the separations. There's the seps. The problem is what we just did only works on a single file. It will not work on the kind of a composite file here. Plan A is we can do what's called splitting channels. We can go to the upper little hash mark here and one of the options is split channels. I'm not going to do that. But in older versions of Photoshop if you split the channels you never knew what the channel name was because Photoshop would just call it uh, channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, channel 4 and unless you knew that that was the orange channel you wouldn't know by the name of the new channel so if you split the channels you'd be like a deck of cards you'd have a channel for the R, G, B shirt color and all your separations kind of stacked together and it would all be grayscale files that you could then convert using the method I just told you image mode bitmap, convert each one individually, but you wouldn't know what the channel name was. Starting a couple years ago in the newer CC versions of Photoshop, Photoshop got smart and now if you split the channels it keeps the channel header as the name. Now I've given you on your work files a program I wrote years ago, just a little JavaScript that I wrote that is, is was designed to help replace the missing screen button back when Adobe brought, took out the screen button and it's called Halftone Converter. I've given it to you on your work files. It's a very simple installation. Basically you copy this little tiny JavaScript into your Adobe folder into a folder called presets and a folder called scripts. You copy it in there and when you open Photoshop up because you have to copy it in there with, a, with Photoshop being closed. And there's a direction sheet with it on, yeah, on your work files. And it shows up under scripts, under file. And it's called Halftone Converter. It's right there. Halftone Converter is a great little routine that automatically uh, splits your channels, uh, assigns each channel the line count and the angle that you want, the dot shape that you want. It does take the channel header as the new name of the file in case you're in earlier versions of Photoshop and then we end up with uh, in this case seven individual channels that are now grayscale files that we can now print one at a time to our inkjet printer using the highest photo quality setting. We've already got our registration targets on it. We have to print them through Photoshop, but we will print through Photoshop. Let's just run that right now. We're going to click and it's going to analyze the file. 
and it brings up this window. Now this is part of my other program called TCEP, so it is, does come up saying TCEP's halftone converter. It will ask you what channels you want, but it pretty much knows you're not going to be doing the RGB. So that comes out auto automatically unchecked. It's smart enough to know you may not want the shirt color, but the shirt color might be checked. We're going to check just the channels we want. We're going to click on continue and it's going to ask us what dot shape we want. We're going to click on ellipse, continue. It's going to ask us what frequency. Let's make this 50 line, continue, and it wants to know the output resolution. Make this 1440. Remember, we want to be as high resolution as we can. Continue. And now it's going to ask us for the angle. Now we could change the angle for each channel if we wanted to, but you know that I'm a fan of using the same angle for all channels, even on CMYK jobs. And when we talk about doing CMYK separations, we'll talk about that you could use different angles for each color. We're going to say convert. The program is going to cook. And it's done. And the file on top is my separation file. We'll just toss that over here. But now I've got a file. And the name of the file is what was the channel header. I've got a file for each one of my SEPs. Remember, Photoshop does not display halftones that well when you're zoomed out. If you zoom in, it starts cleaning things up. But it's because it just doesn't know what to do. And there we have elliptical dot shape. The file is now pre-halftoned ready to send to our printer. You can send it to the RIP, by the way. And it's pre-halftone because a RIP, if you have a RIP, does control the ink deposit. But the file is pre-halftone. And you've got the gray level, the, uh, the gray scale on there. Let's see how tiny those guys are. The 5% dots, pretty small. So you want to try and burn those. And that's how we can not use a RIP, but we can pre-convert the file, the halftone dots, and print it out.